Welcome to Sam's Scotland Against Modern Slavery. Um, Kickstarting uh, the spring with a series of podcasts with DS Stevie Bertram from the National Human Trafficking Unit at Police Scotland. Um, having known Stevie for a, for, a, for a long, long time, Stevie's agreed to do a series for us to help us all understand what's going on from a policing perspective in Scotland and part of our role at SAMS, which is a joint initiative with Police Scotland, the human, uh, Police Scotland, the Scottish Government, and many other organisations, is to relay this information out to the members of SAMS and generally out to the members of the public. So, Stephen, thank you very much for joining us today. No, thanks, Shan. It's really good to see you again. And thanks for having me along today. Well, you know, it's, I'm afraid we're, you know, we're, we're talking about a pretty dark topic here, Stephen, but, you know, in the, in the cool light of day, Providing the information that hopefully we're going to talk about and over we're going to talk about is going to give some insight to those that aren't at the front end of it. And having known you and, and a number of your and many many of your team, it's hard going, really really hard going. What you guys are what you guys are doing out there? What are you seeing out there in Scotland? You know, what's your feeling about? How, you know, how yeah, it? I mean, what I would say is, unfortunately, Sean, is that things aren't slowing down. Um, uh, we're, we're, seeing, we're getting more more referrals coming into us. Um, I, I, I think that's probably mainly down to, to maybe people being better educated on what human trafficking is, and and maybe seeing beyond you know that that myth what human trafficking is. You know, with people chained to to, to radiators and to to shipping containers, and actually that slightly more subtle but very um, very alarming and, and, and really challenging for a lot of for a lot of victims of trafficking. Um, and across Scotland, um, you know, to give you an idea of some of the snapshots, and we talk about the national referral mechanism, and put very uh, basically, it's the system that's in place um, for a, a first responder agency to to notify the Home Secretary of a potential victim of trafficking in their area. So so far this year, um, we've already seen 97 people referred through the, the national referral mechanism, um, and that breakdown. Um, it's been a, a quite a significant increase over the years, but when we look at the the breakdown, we see first um, exploit the first criminality takes up about forty six percent of the people that are coming into the the national the NRM. So what is forced criminality? What do you mean by that, Stephen? So forced criminality so it has a wide a wide array of of, of people getting involved in various crimes, Sean. So. Um, so we see a lot of Vietnamese, a lot of Albanian nationals getting exploited and uh, forced to work in cannabis cultivations is one aspect of that. Um, forced shoplifting, um, we've organised gangs, you know, behind some some child protection issues, forcing children to do that shoplifting. Um, this is gangs making sh- children go in and do, I mean, you mean organised shoplifting, is this in, in big, st- big stores, little shops, is this just generally just stealing to order or how does that... So, so mostly it tends to be your, your kind of higher end shops um, is, is the mm-hmm. sort of themes that you see. We've seen, and alarmingly, we've seen a lot of children um, that have been uh, sort of Eastern European children getting forced into that. Um, some of their exploitation happens within a family setting. Um, and one of the cases that we looked at was tragically because they were, they were you know, from the age of about 12 to 16, they were forced into organised shoplifting uh, by an organised crime group. They, they'd featured in our crime management you know, 50, 60 times, uh, and they've been responsible for for the, the theft of over about £100,000 worth of stock. So that puts it in perspective that you've got a real significant child protection issue with a kid that's out there being forced into that. Do you worry about what they're not getting whilst they're doing that? No, you know, the education, all that side that, that's, that's, that kicks in. And then the impact on the retailer themselves, losing a quantity of stock, it, it, so, and it's all lining the serious and organised crime pockets. Crime gangs. I'm making an assumption here, but the, the crime gang that's involved in this, the, the exploitation of children for forced criminality, they're in, I, I'm assuming they're involved in other areas of criminality, or is this their sole sole income generator? Is it or? No, I think we, we're starting to see that they're that they're very organised at what they do, and without giving them any credit, because the, the work they do is horrible. I mean, it's that they they're exploiting the most vulnerable people in society but actually they're very organised in what they do just by the whole definition of what they're involved in and they're very diverse in what they're so the shoplifting side will be other things but they're probably getting involved in, in other parts of criminality whether that's drugs or whether that's into 
um, uh, you know, from the cannabis side or maybe um, even into prostitution and uh, exploiting women through prostitution. So there's, there's, there are some links within these crime groups. Which is the, the, the point about exploitation is not doesn't just fit in one strand normally, it'll spread right across and that's that's what you're seeing then. Absolutely. And I think this is where you, when you really start to look at these things, you start to see um, a real picture about how these gangs, uh, the groups, can kind of diversify what they're doing. They maybe start off in an area. And let's be quite honest, what they're focused on is making money. And when there's an avenue to make money, they don't see human beings or, or the, the, the person. All they're seeing is a revenue. Um, and if they can make money, they'll do it, regardless of the price and regardless of the exploitation on that person. Brutal, brutal. So, forty-six percent of those NRM victims rescued was fourth criminality. What else are you seeing then so far this year? So the, the forty percent uh, was was uh, labour. No, sorry, sorry, forty-six. You're right for the forced criminality, mm -hmm. and then the next side was forty percent made up of labour exploitation. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's such a wide area of, of where that exploitation can take place. So it's whether somebody's exploited within um, a nail bar. Um, we're about to see better weather coming into Scotland in the springtime. We'll probably see quite a lot of migrant workers coming into Scotland for agriculture, for fruit picking. So there's a real opportunity for people then to exploit people in that area. Um, it's something that we're kind of really, really focused on about making sure that people know their rights. Um, I know you, you ran a, um, an event, I think it was at the start of the year, uh, Shan, time's flying by yeah. now, but into the care sector. And even, you know, the labour exploitation that was was happening within the care sector was another thing that we're really focused on just now and working with a lot of key partners to say about what is the scale of the problem and how do we get around to it? how do we actually target that and prevent that from happening. And didn't you bring up the care sector there Stephen, that, Stephen because the, we, we, we held that round table for Scottish care and because we've seen there's such a significant increase in those being exploited in the care sector across the UK um, and it, when care Care was added to the shortage occupation list, and this it became a sponsorship scheme that many people then are, are, are coming to work legally in the UK and in, in care homes. And many care homes are, are had a huge shortage in the care sector, so it worked. But what then has come out the back of this is that there's unscrupulous people behind it that are, you know, charging charging those that are coming to the UK before they even leave for find you know labour finding fees, which are completely legal in the UK but unknown to the care home that's making the sponsorship, and Sadly, I, I heard a stat that one particular uh, care provider is getting contact 10 or 15 calls a day from those that have come to work and are assigned to a care home but found themselves in not being able to get enough work. So what they were told they were going to get, they're not getting, so they're looking for a new job. They can't get a new job unless the sponsorship transfers on to another, another home. And they're kind of stuck in this limbo. So they're kind of in this sponsorship visa-led part of it and then when you touched on the agriculture that's the the, the seasonal agriculture agriculture worker scheme that is another legal route so as we see immigration tightening up in the UK there are still ways that people are coming and working but they're getting caught and sometimes caught in these traps and obviously not all the time there's many legitimate cases but yeah that's what we're seeing so it's interesting that labour exploitation is still there and still really a really significant percentage of people in Scotland. Absolutely yeah, no, it's a real worry. Um, wait, so when I, what else is, so that's making up, you know, a significant percentage of what you're seeing in the figures here. So can I ask you then, you know, when, when we're, what are the police doing then? What are Police Scotland doing in Scotland at, with regards to the preventative side of, of this? I think for us, you know, right across the right across the board, we're kind of involved. You know, not just the national team here. You know, based at Gartcosh, our, our workload is is uh, pretty full, as you can imagine. Um, but other uh, divisions across uh, Police Scotland, um, we'll have our human trafficking champions embedded. You know, right across Scotland that, that can know the signs, um, will know um, and give really good advice and become involved in that human trafficking investigation including our, our kind of our key partners, you know, well, even our police forces like the British Transport Police. So we're all joined up and we're all part of the, the, the same meetings to discuss uh, any issues. We're doing quite a lot of space um, to try and target, you know, certain communities to see if we could um, if we get the key messages across to try and prevent them falling into harm. 
Um, one of the things that, that, that we've looked at over the last um, a couple of months, it seems to it's, it's now here with us, which is fantastic. We've been working on it for a long time, is that Romanian police secondment. Um, so we're about to have uh, two Romanian police officers um, uh, working alongside us and embedded in the team here at Gartcross with us, which is uh, fantastic. And with a real focus on everything we've really spoke about today in terms of that, um, about how we can get the message, how we can um, how we can speak to the remaining community, how we can get across them about if you're in trouble, if you've done, you know, if if you've applied for a job and it's not what it's signed up to be, then this is what you can do. You know, phone the police. There's a number of partner agencies as well that we work alongside with um, Justice and Care, with Tara, with, with Migrant Help. Um, there's there's so many organisations there that can that can help and support. So it's really just about you know, making sure that people know that there's a place to go to for them. There's there's avenues for them to go. And whether they don't want to come to the police right away or they don't want to come to the police at all, there's other routes they can go down um, to get assistance. Probably like yourself as well, Shan at Sam's, you know, people to, to divert people into to another to another route. So there's an educational piece there um, that we're doing. Obviously, that enforcement side as well. Um, we're still um, we rely heavily on reports from members of the public to, to phone into us. Um, we the modern slavery helpline is there. Um, it's probably a good time to plug that. You know, in terms of the unseen app. You know, about if, if people. I mean, it's, it's the unseen app is on every frontline police officer's mobile device. It gives them instant access to, to information about spotting the signs if there's any debiety at all. So through some of the meetings that you've organised for us through um, Care Scotland, which is a lot of messaging about here's what unseen is. You know, this is what it can do for you. And obviously the link within the unseen map is to the, the modern slavery helpline. And every referral we get through that helpline comes into the unit here, which is triaged by us. And we've had um, some some fantastic reporting. We've rescued people from some really exploitative situations. Uh, so I can't thank people enough for the people that do that. Um, and it's another avenue in to, to report a crime to the police or, or their concerns to the police. Brilliant. OK, so we'll share the the link um, for the Unseen app. It's pretty straightforward to Google it. You'll, you'll find it in the Modern Slavery Helpline and that first port of call not just the app, you can contact the Modern Slavery Helpline. It's manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week with translators available as well. Um, and this will then uh, be, as Stephen has just said, triaged by Police Scotland. So immediate co course of action. If anybody suspects anything, workplace and public life, that's the first port of call. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's, of course, there's other ways to, to report. The, if you wanted to report to the police directly, so the one avenue is through the Modern Slavery Helpline, but of course, there's the one-on-one -on -one system, phone into the police, there's an emergency to phone at the police's treble nine, and you've got other areas such as um, the crime stoppers as well, you can report any concern. So there's lots, again, lots of avenues, and mm. and I'm sure if you were to look at our key partners, there's also things on the websites, um, you know, from, from our key partner agencies that will give advice and guidance about how they can report trafficking or, or how they can seek assistance. Brilliant. Okay. Well, a lot. A lot, a lot to talk about and a lot comment, I, I, a lot more to talk about. So, um, Stephen, I'm delighted you, you know, were able to join me today and, and, and open up a little bit more about the work that Police Scotland are doing, the great work that Police Scotland are doing. We'll keep this series going, so we'll try and keep it on a monthly, maybe bi-monthly basis. We'll give, give the, the members and, and the members of the public an update and what's happening and what's going out there. Um, sadly, to see the figures sitting where they are, it's just... It's what it is, isn't it? And and it's a, a growing problem. But awareness, as you mentioned earlier on, is the first first step in all of this. Okay, DS Stephen Bertram, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll hear much more from you over the coming months. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. Cheers.